Lorraine Newman, Whatcom County. I live in the watershed, and my son's a mountain biker. Since 2008, nothing much has changed with this proposal, some have said. As I sat in the room in February and listened to the budget proposal, I thought I heard some changes. Maintenance and operation costs changed from about 130000 a year to about 150000 a year. A pickup truck, an excavator, and road maintenance costs disappeared. There's been talk of liability insurance, but no costs have appeared. I suppose if some other department takes a hit in their budget, it must not count. And besides, there's a chance no one will notice. I thought the change in the trail development costs were apparent. Last year, it was going to take seven hundred and fifty to nine hundred thousand dollars to develop fifty-five miles of trails. But now, trails wide enough for pack horses, challenging enough for mountain bikers, easy enough for hikers, and stable enough to protect the watershed are only going to cost five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If you believe it, what a deal! I still don't see any costs for campsites or trailheads, but who's looking? People who have spoken for the trail system are excited and talk about money flowing into the community. That's a possibility from what I've been reading if the county is planning on sponsoring events to bring in people. But that's not what the numbers presented. And we are going to have to wait a while because now it's going to take 15 to 30 years to build a money, this money maker. We could have wonderful viewpoints for all, but adding viewpoints would cost a few pennies. That's $2.6 million for an east viewpoint and $3.6 million for a west viewpoint, if you're counting. The economic losses to the county from no timber harvest are not mentioned. How local trust beneficiaries, other than Mount Baker School District, will replace their lost DNR revenues of $238,000 a year were not addressed. How our other parks and trails were fair if we take $54,000 of conservation, conservation future funds away from them each year to support this new park was not addressed. But why should anyone worry about these things anyway? We spent a lot of time hearing about landslides to learn what we all know. The land is steep. It slides for a multitude of reasons. Old roads, new roads, and no roads. No one has mentioned, when DNR is gone and the land slides, how much will the county be on the hook for to clean it up, and how will we pay for it? From my own analysis, using county figures and with no viewpoints and no slide cleanup, it will cost this county's seconds, government at, from 2.7 to 3.8 million for 50 in, in the next 15 years. But you have, you're right, right, some things haven't changed. For many, this has always been about this pretty picture and Wacom Land Trust controlling the land. So let's make it also about being financially responsible. Do an honest economic impact study or let it, or let it go Time. to the taxpayers for a vote or better yet, leave it as it is. Thank you. Next speaker. And as our next speaker is making her way up, I'll call on Linda Morello, uh, Larry Helm, Alan Stockbridge, Mark Harding, Brooks Anderson, Megan Nayland, Bob Simmers, Joan Dow, Javon Smith, Robert Blake, Joe Yaver, Tom Fenton, John Lamont, Phil Humphreys, Phyllis Joy Gilfin. Gilfillan. Okay, the time is yours. Hi, Chris Halterman, third generation, Whatcom County. Thank you very much for having another public hearing on this. Um, I, too, grew up in Lake Whatcom. In fact, I grew up on Lake Whatcom. And my family had a home there up until last year. My mother sold the home due to all the pressures and the financial increases and responsibilities that have come. So that just be aware that there is a lot of impact that the county and the city does on people being able to stay in their homes. Over the past few years, you have heard a lot of statements from special interests with regards to the Lake Whatcom Reconveyance. Thus far, the plans and projected final costs have changed dramatically, as you all know. Will this be Forest Preserve, Park Preserve, Whatcom County Park, and too many others to name here tonight? But that question has still not been answered. Also, it was revealed that the Parks Department and members of the Council have had emails with other private nonprofits about what will and won't be allowed on this land if reconveyed and a conservation easement is placed on the land forever. This question, too, has not been answered. The proposal to create access for low-impact recreation through Whatcom County Parks has been proposed, but a conservation easement would give Whatcom Land Trust the authority to say what and how much low-impact activity would be allowed on the land. 
the DNR also made a proposal to work with the council to create low-impact recreational areas that would service a wider variety of the public interest. The DNR park plan will allow agricultural forestry to continue on this land. Can anyone on this council tell me what the difference is except that the people of this county will get greater use and benefit from the DNR plan without taking on all of the financial liability? Why would any of you be opposed to that? If this is truly only about water quality, increased recreational opportunities, and revenue to the county, how is the DNR option not the best choice? What is the actual intention of this council for this land? Lastly, there's another burning question I have. Has anyone on the council me even made the effort to learn how much the transfer of this land out of DNR management and onto Whatcom County property tax paying residents, what will be the tax implications? Do you know? That's an important question to know before you make this choice. So I did a rough estimate on my personal property taxes from 2005 as a baseline. So from 2005 to 2008, I had no value increase and my property taxes were going down because the base that pays it was growing. Since 2009 to 2013, my property value went up in 2009, but then it continued to go down from there, there on after and seconds, my property please. taxes went up. So lastly, I'm just going to get to the bottom line here and then say my last paragraph. I ask that the council not reconvey the 8,800 acres in the Lake Whatcom watershed back to Whatcom County. I ask that the council leave the management of this land to continue under the DNR. I ask to, to, that you work with DNR to implement a park and rec plan as is being proposed, or at the very least, that you put it to a vote of the people of Whatcom County proper with full disclosure of the purpose and intent of Sorry. what and how this action will affect everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Larry Helm. I've been in Whatcom County about 15 years. You know, when uh, about 12 years ago I had some cows and the cows were in a dry ditch, Pete wrote me a letter saying I was bad. So I started reading about the Growth Management Act, and I got out those notes, and I found number eight goal of the 13 goals of the Growth Management Act is natural resource industries. The Growth Management Act says we will maintain and enhance natural resource-based industries, including productive timber, agriculture, and fishery industries, encourage the conservation of productive forest lands and productive agricultural lands, and discourage inc incompatible uses. Doesn't look to me like we're doing that with this reconveyance. We're chipping away at forestry. Before I came, I'm one of those guys that came from California, and I consider myself a retired park professional. And I set my office and did a lot of eight to 20,000 acre park plans. And when we get an, an economic impact report from a county this superficial, we used to laugh and say, well, they're just going to get the land now and worry about the money later. Is that what we're doing? We're going to get the land now and worry about the money later? Because the money's going to come from me, the taxpayer. And several of you have already told told you we're getting tapped out. You know, I'm not making any money on those cows anymore. They're kind of like a hobby. I could go get model airplanes and probably make more money. And that's because of fees and taxes. And if anybody wants to come and look at the books, I welcome you to do it. And my last statement is, I don't think you should be looking at how much the county can do better if they get this park. I think you should look at how much the state is doing if they're doing a good job because the job they're doing doesn't cost you or me a dime. And if they're doing a pretty good job and it just takes a little massaging to make it a great job, let's do it that way. And I don't want to put this to the county's vote. We've got a piece of property that's generating revenue. I went up there and rode all around on my bicycle and hiked. It's open to the public and it's not costing us anything and we don't have to worry about the liability from accidents, landslides or whatever. And you heard testimony. I was at that meeting with Wes with the director of the ecology, and he flat said there is no impact to the water quality of this lake from this forestry project on this reconveyance land. So they're selling it to the city people that it's going to improve water quality. That's a bad sales job. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, Linda Morrell, Bellingham, Washington. I heard that there might be a final vote on the reconveyance tonight, um, and I don't understand how that can possibly be. It was just a couple of weeks ago that the DNR submitted a viable proposal for developing a, the 8,800 acres into parkland 
and retain timber harvest for the, for the school districts. What a godsend this proposal was to those of us who are completely opposed to this reconveyance. If it's just a park that the council mem members want in favor if it's just a park that the council men members in favor of this want, then this is the perfect first solution for you and us. I personally am opposed to this reconveyance because I see the shenanigans between the Parks Department, Whatcom Land Trust, and county officials, and am completely distrustful of their motives. Too much sleight of hand going on. The DNR's proposal was transparent, it was easy to understand, and I know that we, the Whatcom County taxpayers, won't be footing the liability bill. Since there are so many of us opposed to this project, please let's take a step back here and put it to the people of Whatcom County for a vote. Let us decide. Then we can go from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Tom Fenton, Whatcom County resident. I checked with a friend of mine that builds trails here throughout the state, and he said a trail costs anywhere, a minimum trail is thirty to fifty thousand dollars to build that, and that's not much of a trail, and it can go over a hundred easily, he said. Another thing I've urged all of you to do is do a seismic study on this land, because I was out clearing the mud away, I think it was Olson Creek or Smith Creek when that slid in. And I've also dug down Lake Louise Road, and I know how hard I had to fight to get the pump stations in for the Sudden Valley sewer system coming into Bellingham and all the steel that I had to drive in the ground. And all the water jobs I've done for the city of Seattle, I don't understand why they want to put, you want to have people going through your watershed because the water jobs I've done, you've got to pack everything out and pack everything in and whatever and maintain it like the Tolt River up there where I've been into before and the reservoirs that I've overhauled in Seattle, they make you account for everything and they don't let people in. You check in at a gate and you go out through the gate. It's not fair. So why do you want to put more people through your watershed and drive the quality of the lake down? That's what I'm asking. Why do you want to drive the quality of the lake down? Because it's going to happen. You need a healthy forest because I've cleared land in watersheds where they said you got to get rid of this because it's diseased in here. If you don't have a healthy forest up there around that lake, you don't have nothing. There's nothing there. Your water qualities go down. And I've worked for the city of Bellingham in the watersheds out here around the lake and stuff. I've actually overhauled the city water treatment plant over the years. And I've worked for a lot for the city of Seattle. And it goes down the more people you add in the system and put around the lake, you know, Go use the parkland that he hasn't used yet. Go take care of that first, and don't put more taxes on us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Oh, let me call some more names up before you get started. Barbara Shoemaker, Debbie Cantrell, Craig Bad, Stacy May, Judith. Atkins, Amelia, Seagrave. And then we're at the end of my list, so if there are more lists, I'll take those. Okay, the time is yours, thanks. My name is Joy Gilfillan. I'm a Whatcom County resident and an entrepreneur and founder of UnitingCreatives.com. I've been paying attention to national and international resources, local resources, uh, civic service for a while. And one of the concerns that I would like to raise is that in the, in the world, only a few percent of all the water that's available is fresh water. When you look at Whatcom County, it is one of the greatest fresh water resources in the Pacific Northwest. I think that is worthy of note, and I think that it is essential that we as Whatcom County residents assess its real value to us, not only as a forest asset, as a watershed asset, as a quality of life asset, as a water asset that is becoming more and more and more valuable for a population of seven billion people. And it's a wildlife asset and it's a recreation asset for our children 
many of whom are actually right now ending up going into our prison system through DUIs and through alcohol treatment and other problems that we have in our social services. We need resources for our children. Local control is also essential. We are losing much, much control of a lot of our natural resources to make it interests and international interests. When you look at cost, there's a couple things to consider. One of them is ecotourism is actually a very big asset. When I used to manage the Visitor and Convention Bureau quite a few years ago, one of the greatest assets I learned about was the cost of the multiplier effect when money can be recirculated locally. If, in fact, we can bring a lot of recre recreational people into the area and we can circle, circulate that money locally and that money stays with our local entrepreneurs, that is a great economic asset to this county. And if you also want to look at costs, why not put some of our work crews to work? If you want to cut back on jail costs and you want to make a difference and not spend $90 million for a jail, let's look at reallocating some of those funds. And let's put those people to work doing something that can actually rehabilitate our citizens. So I do stand in favor of reconvance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is John Lamont. I live out in the county. I just have a couple quick things. One, I'm against this reconveyance. Uh, two, no matter which way this reconveyance goes tonight, I would urge all of you to put $100,000 and hire someone to, from out of county to come up and do an estimate of just what it is going to cost the taxpayers of Whatcom County to do this park. I, I think you're going to be amazed because uh, County Park seems to have different figures at every, each and every meeting. Uh, third, I would like to ask Pete Crimmin to uh, excuse himself from this vote. He was here in 2006. He started this mess. And my last thing would be I would like, like Jack, our county executive, not to sign the, the uh, conservation easement that was put on his desk December 27th by Whatcom Land Trust. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, on the list now are Aaron Moore, Mary Locum, Craig Stevens, Donna Clark, Jast Polson, Gathia Weiss, Barbara Carabin, James Spech, Jasmine Minbashian, David Wurntz, Mark Wiegland, Doug Campbell, and Ellen Baker. You're up if you're on the list. That's okay, I'm going to keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you very much. I'm Doug Campbell, 1401 Astor Street. I'm a civil engineer in Bellingham, and I'm also a resident of Lake Whatcom. Last time I was here, about three-quarters of the speakers were opposed to this, and I'm here tonight to also oppose it. I'm not really comfortable with what I've seen so far of the plan, and especially allowing Whatcom County to let any NGO run this thing. That 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 is unnerving to me. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about any organization, but I think that's not the right way to do it. We're talking a lot of talking talking about what should, is correct for our community. I think that's one business mistake. Um, as far as Lake Watkins is concerned, I've read the re TMDL reports, all of them. Uh, I've read about, about the largest contributor of phosphorus to our lake, and it's the mass wasting and the slope stability problems that this property represents to Whatcom County. It represents liability, and it represents a fiduciary responsibility that I think you also need to take very seriously. I personally think you should work on our legislators to get them to spend more money through the DNR to work on those mass wasting and slope stability issues and spend your money on the existing residents within the watershed. Get them to put some programs together to clean up the water. I think you're working toward that. Next, I, I, I support the enhanced program that the DNR has put forward. I don't know why it took them so long to come to grips with what they need to do, but 
I think there's some momentum there I think the county should work toward. I also personally believe that majority of the quality of life, life issues we heard about tonight um, aren't really being destroyed one way or the other by leaving it in the hands of the DNR. I think that those things can, can be enhanced. So lastly, I, again, I think it's a business decision. I don't, I don't think you need a vote for it. I think you need to make a business decision. So I, I hope you act responsibly tonight. Honestly, I think it's not good for the community. I just think you say, no, we can't afford it. And work with the DNR, and let's put together a program that we can support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Jasmine Minbashi, and I'm from Bellingham, Washington. And I also um, spent many years serving on the Cedar River Advisory Committee for the watershed that helped develop the HCP for the Cedar River. And um, that experience was great. Um, and one thing I can convey to you is that your decision tonight is going to go down in the history books. Because, in fact, when we were deliberating how to manage Seattle's watershed, we did consult the history books. And we learned that the watershed manager 100 years ago had speculated that 100 years later, Seattle would number in the millions. And for that reason, they put all their resources into acquiring land that this, for the city to acquire land in the watershed. A hundred years later, that was the best decision Seattle's made. And I can assure you that a hundred years from now, think about what Bellingham's going to look like. Think about how many people are going to be living here in Whatcom County and what that park is going to mean to those people. So I just... Urge you to make history tonight, and thank you for all your time and effort. Thank you. All right. John Bremer, Jesse Bolo, Shayla, is it Lovell? Lovick, David Jefferson, uh, Jeremy Millman, Christopher Mandel. Thad Quinn, Jamie Sandberg, Kathy Salisbury, Jason Reimer, Noah Crozier, Ann Gunderson, John Marshall, Matt Durand, and Alex McLean. Anybody wish to speak to us on the list? Come on up. That is the end of the, the sign-up sheets. So if you didn't hear your name and wish to speak, please line up. Hello, I'm Noah Crozier. I live just a couple blocks away in the Lettered Streets. Um, I've been studying this issue for the last 10 weeks, actually, at Western, an environmental impact assessment class. Uh, doing a lot of research on this, I've looked at the proposed action. I've looked at alternatives, including the Crawford Plan and the DNR managing it. And it seems to me, after doing this research, that um, reconveying the entire land is going to be the best choice. As someone mentioned earlier, this is an uh, investment for the future. Water is going to be one of the best investments for the future that we can make. Um, and I definitely agree with logging. I don't think this is the right place in the county to do it, though. It's around the watershed for, you know, the water that most of the county drinks. Um, thank you. Uh, please vote in favor of the reconveyance. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. My name is Matthew Goggins. I live in Sonoma Valley. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm in a position to tell the council to approve this or not approve it because, quite frankly, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue. It's a complicated issue. But that makes me oppose it because the burden of proof in a situation like this is to, is to, is to vet a proposal is to do a cost-benefit analysis, is to do due diligence. And I'm, that's nothing against Mr. McFarlane. He's done all the due diligence that he's been tasked to do. But I think there's a larger issue of due diligence as to the global impact of everything that's going to happen when you do this reconveyance or not. Uh, and the thing that concerns me the most is that I feel like this whole conversation and perhaps the deliberation process, I'm not really familiar with the workings of the county council, are based on some assumptions that may be false. Uh, there's issues of water quality. Uh, I've heard from reliable sources that, you know, water quality will probably not be improved by the reconveyance. 
unless there's some draconian multi-minimal use pro program that's instituted afterwards. In which case, you're not going to have a park. Right now, you have a park that's administered by the DNR. But if you make uh, a watershed preserve, there won't be the same kind of activities that you currently have. Uh, uh, and I'd like to give a concrete example of what I mean by what may be a false assumption. For example, I live in Sun Valley. I was on the board of directors last year. I was president and acting president for two months. Uh, and I happened to be at the board meeting where the board, under the leadership of Lawrence Brown, uh, voted unanimously with great enthusiasm to uh, say, go for it, reconvey. Uh, and I'd like to stipulate up front that Larry Brown is a great president. He's probably a better president than I am. So this is in no way a reflection on him. But you know how that decision was reached? It was in the middle of a two-hour meeting, and there was a three, maybe four-minute discussion, which consisted entirely of Larry saying, hey, this is a great idea, guys. <laughs> and there was some background material sent by email. But uh, it, there was no discussion whatsoever. Not a single question was asked. There was no opposing point of view presented. I was sitting there in the audience. There were fewer audience members than there were board members at the meeting. And I wasn't given a, a chance to comment or ask questions because the board's not set up for that. It's not really a political body. It's an administrative board. 30 seconds, please. Uh, body. So you might get the impression, oh, Southern Valley is all for this. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, they might be, but nobody knows unless you actually took a poll or a vote or something. So uh, just to sum up, uh, there are so many open questions about this. I, I would be really disturbed personally as a resident of Whatcom County. I live in this watershed for seven years now to see this vote take place now. I really think it should be tabled. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Maggie Matheson Hansen, and I've been a lifelong resident of Whatcom County, and I really don't have a lot of new things to say tonight, but I was here two weeks ago, and I have a, I had many friends that were in the audience that night and uh, talked to them afterwards and since and have, you know, respect them so much and heard their different sides of this discussion and after uh, looking into it and hearing both sides of the issue, I just feel like I would really think that this is a win-win situation from all residents, for all the residents of Whatcom County to reconvey this land uh, to the new park system and to uh, I think that this is something that we would look at many years from now, and I won't be around, you know, but many of you will, and many of the audience will. And I just want to tell you that I appreciate every one of the time, the time that you all have spent on this issue. I want to thank you and really want you to think about it, and I'm going to be long gone, but... Uh, You'll be doing this county a big favor, I think, if you really consider this. And it's a win-win situation for our county. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Next speaker, please. Carol Perry, Buckham County. It's a scary thing when you get up to say something and you don't know what you're going to say. But I, I've got some heroes here. I got involved. I, I've been here to every meeting that I could come. I wanted to know. I, I wanted to know the truth. And, and I thank Kathy because she's brought that out. And um, I've got some heroes. Um, one of you stood up and said at the very beginning when I didn't know what reconveyance was, this is too big. Take it to the people. You guys should have done it that way. You'd have a lot of grief off your backs. Another one of you said, I love parks. But we need a jail. 
It's coming. Who knows if the questionable things are questionable? How can you figure it out? I've tried. I've gone to every meeting. God help us. And I think that's where we're at. I don't know. A lot of you don't know. God help us. Thank you, Carol. Come on up, next speaker. Uh, hi, I'm Rob Brown of Bellingham. First off, thank you very much for this effort. Um, uh, win, lose, or draw, there's been a lot of time and effort going into this, and I appreciate that. Um, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things. There was, uh, an earlier speaker said there was a lack of facts in this process, and I'd just like to bring up a couple of indisputable facts. There's 1,356,000 acres of land in Whatcom County, 220,000 of that is public, 110 of that is private, of, of those that is used for forestry. That's effectively a quarter of the uh, total land mass. Now, the, uh, pre one of the pre earlier speakers talked about the fact that they need one quarter, effectively, of Whatcom County to support 45 timber jobs. That equates to one job per 7,300 acres, one job per 4,800 acres of public land, land the industry doesn't pay for, land the industry doesn't pay property taxes on. The earlier speaker said that it was... Uh, the council is, should, should not ignore those who create jobs and are paying taxes. It was said earlier that um, the people who signed my letter were, I quote, uh, Democratic Party businesses that pay minimum wage. Well, I signed that letter, and the, and the jobs I created, 140 of them, effectively paid on average about 12% more than the timber jobs, and they provided benefits. I'm assuming the timber industry did as well. This translates into 140 jobs on two acres of land, land I paid $350,000 for, land that I paid $3 million to the construction industry to employ people to build a building on, and land I pay about $20,000 a year in property taxes. That equates to one job per 642 square feet. Um, $10,000 per acre of land in annual taxes, and I pay these every year whether I make a profit or not. Um, I want to make it clear that I support a sustainable forest industry and every job is important. That if we do nothing, but if we do nothing, there is going to be less timber jobs next year than there is this year, and there's going to be next the year after, and the reason is because of automation. It's automation that is killing the forestry jobs in this county, not parks. We can't replace these jobs by creating more forestry land. We simply don't have the land base. The only way we can replace these jobs is to encourage new employers to come in to the county and create new jobs. I created 140 jobs in two acres. The mill would need 900,000 acres to create the same number of jobs as I did on two. So, Five seconds, in, please. In, in again, repeating the comment of the earlier speaker, I urge, urge you to support those who are creating jobs and paying taxes. I urge you to support the reconveyance. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council during the public hearing? This is your opportunity. All right. No. If you've spoken already, your time is up. All right. Seeing nobody else, I will close the public hearing. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you all for being model citizens and uh, expressing your views in a respectful way of everybody here. So I want to really say I appreciate that greatly. I do want to say that when I started this, I was reading names, and if people didn't want to speak, I was reading their vote. That got a little cumbersome, so I stopped doing that. Some of you may have noticed. So what I did was total up the number of names who indicated they didn't want to speak but had registered a vote, and those totals are there were 57 people that uh, indicated they were for the reconveyance that didn't wish to speak, and there were seven people who were against the reconveyance that didn't wish to speak, according to the tabulations on the paperwork that people signed up for. just didn't want to leave out that important piece. So are we going to do, from now on, are we going to be doing that on all of our hearings, say for and against on every single thing? Well, uh, we'll see. This was actually done this way tonight so that if people were in the foyer, couldn't make it in, 
couldn't stay till we anticipated it might be a late night, they could at least register what they uh, felt and um, we'll see if it works out. You can't. You can't, please, you can't, you need to sit down, please. Thank you. All right. What are the wishes of the council? Madam Chair, I move that we uh, adopt a resolution requesting the reconveyance of approximately 8,844 acres of state forest land managed by the Department of Natural Resources to Whatcom County for public park purposes. All right, it's been moved. Councilmember Knudsen. Well, I would, I would like to fly something one more time. Um, six months ago, I asked this to be put on the ballot, and it, it was denied. Uh, at, if we would have done that, we wouldn't be having this conversation now. I would. Uh, we heard some concerns that people wanted to see that happen. I know recently um, Bellingham voted on whether they wanted to finance a 90-acre park. We're asking the residents of Whatcom County their opinion on 8,800 acres, and I would hope that we would give the citizens that same right. So I would ask one more time that um, we put this on the ballot and let the voters decide. Okay, it's been moved to pass, and now it's been moved to put on the ballot. Councilmember Mann? Well, I'd just like to speak against that, and since I've been fairly consistent in my opinion that that is not the right step. Um, I'll say why again is I don't feel like we are we, we are elected to study these issues and make hard decisions. We are not paid to vote 7 0 on the easy ones about which road should be repaved this year or not. We're supposed to take the time to study the hard issues and make the decisions. That that is our job. And I don't like punting on the controversial ones. That that is, that's not the way it's supposed to go. Um, and I'm not saying this is you necessarily, but in general, every time somebody in the public or the the, the last resort of anybody who foresees they're about to lose a vote is to either ask for more studies or ask for a vote of the people. That that's inevitably what happens, and that's course what's happening now so I think we should do our job I think we should sit here and explain our votes I'm more than happy to do it again and and, and vote on this here and do what we were elected to do Councilmember Brenner <clears throat> well I have to disagree with Councilmember Mann Thank and you. you you voted for the um, something we didn't have to do at all is to put the um, salary commission on. And I asked you why, and you said, because I don't want to do it. That seems like... That's required by charter to be on the ballot. No, only if we're going to do it. It well, wasn't required to put anything on there. It was it, the, the charter required us to make those decisions. Yes, it did. And those are hard decisions. I'm just saying that, um, you know, we are elected to make hard decisions. And we have also, over the years, taken advisory votes from the public on things that m could be very cost costly, and um, I just feel like this is one of those things that there's. I'm going to say my comments when we get to the comments part if this doesn't fly, but I just, you know, people were saying exact opposites of each other, and the we have never gotten the information that we claimed we wanted, we've got we've got information that's kind of been a moving target. It just keeps moving. And I would, I said right from the beginning, way back, because my big interest is water quality. And I have to say that's really my main interest. And it, I was looking, if anybody could show me water quality that would be significantly changed, improved, whatever, by doing this, I had already said many times I would support it. So, um, I, and I don't, I'm not beholden to anybody, by the way. No, no, any special interests, everybody talked about special interests. I just feel like this is one of those times when we have the right to ask the public what they think of something like this. I think it's, it's just as um, credible 
as if we did it our, you know, there are things that it's, it's good to get an advisory vote on, and we've done it in the past, especially on park-related issues. Okay, I'm getting a note from our clerk here that uh, Councilmember Kremen would have to withdraw his motion in order to consider Councilmember Knudsen's motion. We can't have two motions on the floor. Okay. So, Councilmember Brenner, I got a question. Doesn't his motion amend? I mean, wouldn't that be like an amendment? It's not. I'm not asking you guys. I'm asking the person yeah, who, who does yeah. this. We appreciate that okay. many, uh, many of the audience members have experience on different boards and in different capacities, but we have our own rules here, and we can't take input or feedback from you, so I'll ask you to please keep it down because the public hearing part is over now, and now it's the time for the council to talk among, you know, up here and, and come to a conclusion. So thank you very much in advance. Councilmember Kremen, did you have a comment? Well, uh, it, it isn't that I have a comment. I think I, I have to make a decision. It, at least uh, Councilmember Knudsen would like me to consider uh, withdrawing my motion. Is that not correct? That's correct. Uh, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to... In the interests of... Uh, in, in the interest of, of fair play, uh, I have faith in this council, and uh, I, I'm going to accommodate your request to withdraw my motion so that we can have a, a vote on whether or not to send this issue to the, to the voters. Having said that, uh, I adamantly oppose the motion that you made. Uh, I, I concur with Council Member Mann. Uh, we are elected by the people uh, to make tough decisions. And uh, as was pointed out earlier this evening by one of the uh, individuals to testify before us, that we did just have an election in the last cycle. And uh, Council Member Crawford was very public and very consistent about his support for uh, this issue, uh, the reconveyance. And I emerged victorious as well uh, with the public knowing full well that I was and had been working for the uh, culmination of the reconveyance. So I'm I will withdraw my motion, and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll vote on this uh, as soon as we possibly can and, and move forward. Okay, so Council Member Knudsen's motion is on the floor. Does anybody else wish to speak to that? Council Member Crawford? Well, I'm, I'm not going to support it either, and I just want to clarify that my commitment to all of you citizens of Whatcom County is that I would only put on the ballot a property tax increase uh, and my fellow council members have heard me say that many times over the years and I even disagreed with the septic tank fee I think that should have gone to the ballot but uh, because I think that is a property tax uh, or a charter amendment which we have done several times in my tenure here but I'm not going to punt on any decision here um, and by the way, the, the voters unfortunately can't decide this issue. Only the county council can. That doesn't preclude, I think, I don't know if you use the word advisory. It would have to be an advisory yeah. vote. It would still be up to the county council, and they would not be bound uh, by the vote anyway. But uh, in any case, uh, for those reasons, I'm not going to be supporting this. And I'll speak in favor of putting on the ballot because a month ago I voted that uh, I thought that it might be a good idea to go on the ballot. Um, my reasons are because I have seen our community become extremely divided and very, um, very, having ver a very difficult time with getting information and um, 
feeling like they're being heard. I think that if it went on the ballot, the campaign could occur in the public process. The people that are for it could campaign for it and convince their neighbors, and the people that are against it could campaign against it and convince their neighbors. And um, we would get an advisory vote of the people. All of that being said, I feel like um, I can also vote on it tonight if this fails, which it looks like it will, and I'm not afraid to make the tough decision. But I could support letting the people make that decision to give us advice. Councilmember Weimer? Well, just to end any suspense, I, I'm also against the motion. We've been talking about this for over six years. We've heard all the information over and over again. All of the elected bodies that have any authority over water quality, land use, and the Lake Whatcom watershed have voted in favor of this. The city, of the city, Bellingham City Council, the Lake Whatcom Sewer, Water and Sewer District, the Sudden Valley Board, um, they all represent the people and they've all spoken. And I, I think we just need to make this deci decision. Okay. Just the opposite. We have the Ag Advisory Board, the Cattlemen's Association, um, a number of other entities. It sounds like um, the re they think the reconveyance would be a good process as long as it was low impact, non intrusive, um, uh, and uh, the criteria that they listed on there, it doesn't sound like you're going to have extreme mountain biking, horseback riding, or any of those activities in, in on those trails with the criteria that they list on their letter. So um, I would like to say that there are some entities that have weighed in against this as well. Okay. Is there any further discussion on putting it on the ballot? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. All right. That motion fails four to three. Council members Knudsen, Kirshner, and Brenner in favor. All right. What are the wishes of the council? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I move that we adopt the resolution requesting the reconveyance of approximately 8,844 acres of state forest land managed by the Department of Natural Resources to Whatcom County for public park purposes. Okay, it's been moved to um, pass the resolution, Councilmember Knutson and then Brenner. Yeah, um, there's, we've heard, we've heard um, from promises that this, there wasn't nothing to be concerned about the ownership or um, running of this park being um, subbed out to some other entity. So I would like to add onto the resolution um, uh, and now, therefore, it be resolved that Whatcom County intends to fully manage all aspects of the property and retain all resources and rights of ownership exclusively unless the property is conveyed back to the Department of Natural Resources. And this would include the mineral, timber rights, conservation easements, that they would all be handled by Whatcom County and that the administration would see that that, is, that, that happens. Okay, so do you have the language there, Councilmember Knudsen? I do. You want to hand it down here? All right. So is it okay if I reread it uh, so that everyone's clear on what you want to add to the resolution? It would be a now, therefore, it be resolved instead of a whereas. So under the now, therefore, be it resolved section of the, the, the existing, existing resolution. resolution. Can you read it again? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just looking to see where it goes. No. <clears throat> all right. Whatcom County intends to fully manage all aspects of the property and retain all resources and rights of ownership exclusively, including mineral and timber rights and any conservation easements unless the property is conveyed back to the Department of Natural Resources. Council Member Weimer. Uh, just a question. I was wondering if that's been reviewed by either the Parks Department or our legal staff, uh, just on how it might affect uh, the from resolution. The that, that's from our... That's what? From Royce Buckingham. Attorney. Let's, let's let Council Member Knudsen explain his process here. Right. Yes. I contacted legal this morning about it. 
Have you run it by DNR? Um, I have not. Councilmember uh, Knudsen and then Crawford. Kramer Knudsen. I'm sorry. Councilmember Kramer. There's too many K's sorry, up here. K's, K's. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I just, uh, I think I know, but I'd like a, a validation of what the intent of your, your motion is. Well, you've heard over and over again from the people that were coming forward that they were worried that um, the management of this property would um, go to some other uh, organization and... Um, I think if, if Whatcom County is indeed going to transfer uh, the management of this property from the DNR, that we should um, be the ones that manage it. Councilmember Kremen. Uh, thank you. I, I actually concur with the intent of, of the motion that you made. My concern is, and and if I can get the attention of our legal representative, Mr. Buckingham. Uh, my concern is, is that we have uh, a resolution that has been uh, run by the Department of Natural Resources, and I'm concerned that any modifications or changes uh, may jeopardize the approval of the Department of Natural Resources when it goes before them for approval. And your question for me is? Is if, if, we, if the council were to adopt this resolution, does it? Commit. Would it jeopardize the, uh, the DNR's approval. I mean, I, I, I don't want any changes made that are going to, uh, you know, cause the Department of Natural Resources to, uh, you know, vote against or not approve the reconveyance. Maybe Mr. McFarland can. It, uh, on a number of our transfers that we've received from the state, they retain or reserve the min mineral and gas rights for the benefit of the state. Under reconveyance, I'm not aware that those would need to be transferred to use it for park purposes, and the state may retain those. That's, so, you know, that that is a question whether or not they could transfer the mineral and gas rights, although the only thing we can reserve for ourselves is whatever rights or interests we get in the property on that. Could we add language to that um, amended uh, motion that stated, unless specifically reserved by the state? I think you could. Yeah, I, I, I believe you can. That, 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 I mean, we're only going to get title for, for what they convey to us. I think that uh, if I read that motion correctly, the interest is that we are not transferring any rights or conservation easements or management of this land to any other organization or entity other than Whatcom County. That's not our intention, and we want to make that clear. Uh, Royce? Um, my impression is that you're resolving to do something. You're stating your intent. And so to put the intent in a resolution doesn't legally bind other people. It says this is what we intend to do. And so to give effect to what you intend to do, people will take your resolution and go off and make contracts and make agreements and things. But your expressed intent in the resolution shouldn't foul those agreements down the road. This is what you hope will happen, what you direct people to do. But as we, as we know, a resolution doesn't have force of law. It's it's a policy statement. Okay. Councilmember Crawford and then Brenner. Yeah, but along that same line, uh, Prosecutor Buckingham, there's nothing about that that binds any future council from taking any action they want. Is that correct? I mean, this doesn't... You know, we us resolving that tonight doesn't mean that two weeks from now we couldn't resolve to put the whole thing under a conservation easement on, in charge of a third party. Isn't that correct? And that's what I told Mr. Knutson. I, I warned him that right. you know the actions you take can be 
undone by future yeah. councils. So I, uh, okay, thank you. I, I uh, agree with Councilmember Crimmon. I, I, in that, I support. I understand the intent. I think what we have a situation here is that uh, Ran Jack and. God bless Rand Jack. He, I pray for his soul every night. But, um, <laughs> you know, what? he uh, emailed a proposal to our parks director a few years ago, and that proposal uh, was uh, offered up as all communications to a public disclosure request, and immediately the whole county uh, seems to be... Uh, blogging and talking and emailing that this is all going to fall under the Whatcom Land Trust. All I can do is share my experience with the Whatcom Land Trust, which has generally uh, been a positive one. However, they were in deals that um, were for the most part or completely brokered by the Land Trust. And in fact, I'm, I'm thinking of, for instance, the Olson property had had the land trust not gone out, found the heirs across the country to uh, the Olsons that uh, had that, that opportunity would have never even been presented to us. So yes, the land trust has a conservation easement on that property. That was part of the deal. Either we, we took it or uh, they would probably figure out something else to do with it. So in this particular case, we have spent the last uh, three months thoroughly reviewing with the help of the Parks Department uh, the future of this in terms of uh, parks management, forestry management, and financing it. And uh, I think, as someone said, this is a real biggie. I don't remember exactly what their words were, but this is big. And I think it would be simplistic for us to assume that a conservation easement that simply to put it into the hands of the uh, the fee, all the decision making in the future into the land trust would be appropriate for this and I don't intend to support that at this time. I'm going to also say that there may be portions of this that I would like to keep an open mind and understand what the benefits of conservation easements are uh, and why the land trust loves to have those things binding us. Uh, I can't say that tonight I think that would be a good situation for any of this, but I want to keep an open mind and say in the future there may be portions of this that a conservation easement may have some benefit, public benefit, that we could take a look at, and, and uh, I'm not sure what that is now. But to try to modify this by saying we resolve never to put a third-party conservation easement on this, I don't see that we're really accomplishing anything. Um, that said, also, I, I, I want to say something I was going to say later, and that is that when it comes to the forestry management plan uh, of this, should it pass tonight, that uh, I would certainly like to be involved in crafting that plan and shepherding that plan into existence. Okay, Council Member, I think Brenner, Mann. Uh, well, I, I was just going to say it because I thought the holdup was about <coughs> uh, recon any possible conveyance back to DNR. We, I was going to say because it's a resolution, and even if it wasn't, we can't commit the DNR. So I didn't see that as a problem. You guys are talking about something different, but that's one of the things I thought. Council Member Mann, Knudsen, Weimer. I have no opposition to the intent of what you expressed, but it, today I asked, or this evening I asked the director uh, when he was giving his presentation, what happens if we approve it? What's the process? And it sounds like it goes back to the uh, Department of Natural Resources, and they evaluate everything for the technicalities and make sure it's correct. So knowing that the resolution has already been vetted back and forth with the DNR, to make sure those technicalities are ironed out in advance, I'm very reluctant to change any part of it. Now, I, I, I also just have to say that sitting here tonight and listening and having to stay silent while person after person repeated this notion that somehow the, the Whatcom Land Trust is coming and getting rich off the reconveyance is, is entirely frustrating and preposterous. Now, I, I, I have no intention to 
give this land over to any NGOs who are going to come and I, I don't know what they would do, right? But it, it, that's not on the table. That's not part of this proposal. And if it, it, if it ever comes to me in, in that light, I will vote against it. And I'd be happy to, if you want to pass a separate resolution, and I'll sign it in blood if you want it. And, you know, I it, it just, just I am not going to mess with this legal technicality stuff that sort of we haven't really played a role in. I, I, I want to stick with the document as written, get it through the system, and then start to work on a plan. Councilor Knudsen? I, I'm hearing a lot of shallow excuses from a council that earlier stated they were concerned about this, asked the land trust, and the land trust said they had no intent of doing this, even though they had submitted that letter to, and I, uh, to our parks director with uh, easement in place that if you take the time to read is concerning I don't I, reading it I don't even know if they can't transfer some of the proper uh, properties uh, the easements that they're doing on this so um, I think that this is the responsible thing to do if you are concerned about some other entity running this property and I, I'm very confused because um, some of the council members that are saying they're against it are the same ones that asked the question and assured me that this would never be an issue as long as they were on council and um, now they're stating that well you know we don't want to do this um, it's, uh, it's confusing to me that why this would be controversial if if indeed you guys are serious about not letting some other entity run the parks besides our parks department Councilmember Weimer. Well, I'm going to speak against the motion also. Um, I, I'm not sure I have any problems with the language, but my main concern is just as Councilmember Mann mentioned that uh, this was already crafted by DNR and our staff, and I don't know what the repercussions of making a change are, and I don't want to find myself sitting here a month from now having another hearing because we have to change the wording one more time. Um, the reality is that Yes, you know, in the past six years when we've been talking about this, the idea of conservation easement has come up a couple of times. The city of Bellingham even at one point mentioned a conservation easement that they might be willing to pay the county for in, in a way to help us fund this park. Um, I don't think any of those things they ever got any serious traction. I never remember any discussion where we were talking about giving the management of the park to anybody else. Um, so it's not a big concern of mine, and even if we want to address that, it seems like the time to address that is after the reconvance happens, when we start getting into the park plan, where we can put stuff set in stone about how we're going to manage the park. Uh, Councilmember uh, Kremen, Brenner, and Knudsen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this issue did come up. I, I don't remember the time frame, but I was certainly county executive at the time. I think it was maybe a couple of years ago and when it came to my attention that there had been uh, an expressed desire on the part of uh, the, the Whatcom Land Trust uh, for uh, some easement, uh, I, uh, I had a discussion with my deputy administrator and was very, my inclination and my desire was uh, very firm in that this reconveyance was going to be totally in control and the destiny determined by Whatcom County. And that's, was my, that was my position then, and that's my position now. Schwartz from the Herald, uh, uh, pay attention because uh, this summer it's going to be big news when they start talking about where they're going to put this thing. It was big news back in the 80s, as you all recall, uh, when the county proposed it and it eventually uh, went down. But uh, DNR is going to go slay that dragon now. And uh, good luck to them. I am an off-road user, and I, I actually support that. And uh, I can tell you that's a good thing. It won't be happening in this location, and never, ha uh, contrary to what someone said tonight, never has DNR proposed putting that facility in this location. Um, but I, you know, the point I wanted to make, just to clarify something that I've left hanging out there, is uh, something someone referenced earlier tonight to the Crawford proposal. And what they were talking about was last uh, October, November, 
I took a look at these maps and the hazardous areas and, and uh, in an attempt to reach out to my friends in the timber community, of which I consider myself to be a part of, um, I talked about removing portions of this and, and keeping them in DNR management to assure um, uh, potential harvest. Uh, so the less uh, geologically hazard landslide areas would, would fit into that. And I, I kind of went through those maps and spent quite a bit of time on it. But I'm going to withdraw that uh, right now uh, just to make it clear. It's not on the table uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and that mounted to about 1,700 acres of the 8,800 or 8,400, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, main thing is it was pointed out to me that although I took some nice timber harvest areas, I also eliminated all of our potential revenue from cell towers and communication towers. And that uh, that's going to offset our annual 130 to $150,000 cost by um, close to 100000 And I think that's a pretty valuable thing to keep. It was also pointed out that I took out probably, because if you think about where communication towers are located, I also took out some of the best viewpoints. But um, I, I, the main reason, to be honest with you, is that we've learned a lot from DNR and uh, have inquired with that DNR lady down there, I can't remember what her name is, down in Olympia. And they clearly understand and recognize that they have a responsibility by state law if we request it to have a participation in the forest management of this. And it got to a point where my, my proposal, uh, there wasn't much difference other than I still was saying I will fight for and want an easement, a, a, a trail easement, to go through those DNR properties so that we can have connectivity with our trail system. Well, the, you know, working with them on that, I can tell you from both uh, my public role here as well as my attempts to work with local motorcycle organizations to work with DNR, because I already told you I'm, I'm an advocate for off-road vehicle use in certain areas. Um, but particularly just trying to get conservation easements through the DNR is a, is a very difficult thing. And, and I, I appreciate and respect that many of you were impressed with DNR coming up here, the two DNR guys a few weeks ago talking. Uh, I have never worked really with Mr. Morin, but I, I have worked with our local folks. And it's a very, very different story if you want to go down to Cedro Woolley and walk in their office and try to talk to them and talk about these things, you're not going to get uh, that level of, um, of positive uh, <laughs> reinforcement that they're out there fighting for our recreational ideas. They, they are doing this because they now have a mandate from the not only the director, but they have had consistently a mandate from the governor to start addressing these things since 2006. And they're going to do it. But once again, if you get down to in, into the weeds of what exactly they're looking at and where this got um, uh, started where we became a top priority in the state for their recreation development and what they really were saying without saying it here because they have to go through a public process is that they're talking about developing an off-road vehicle park and uh, like I said stay tuned I, I predict within the next four or five months you're going to hear a lot more about that so one to clarify I am pulling the the the, the issue off the table of removing some acreage and letting this stand as a the original proposal of eight whatever the acreage was, 8,000 and so Okay, Council Member Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm not expecting to persuade anybody on what I'm going to say now, but I, I just think it's important on really publicized issues and controversial issues to let people know why I'm voting how I'm voting. So I'll just do that briefly. Um, I have written about this already a lot on my Bellingham Herald blog, on Facebook, and you can comment there and tell me what you think. That would be great. Uh, some of the arguments we've heard tonight, you, uh, the, the, the NGO issue, the Whatcom Land Trust is going to be taking it over as a conservation easement. We're giving away our land. That is not on the table. That's not an option. No, it's actually not. And, yes, there was a letter written once upon a time. That was an uns that, that died right then and there, and this, someone talking about it was on Jack Lowes' desk, 
it's, it's never even seen Jack Lowes' desk. So there, there's a lot of misinformation around on that particular issue. And for those of you that are seriously concerned about that, it's not going to happen. I, I'm telling you that. But the other thing is this DNR presentations did not impress me. I, I'm still astounded at the number of people who felt like that was better than the presentations we've had from our county parks department. The DNR has less money. They, they have no money for this type of thing. They have less experience and less motivation to do it. If they did ever get around to developing a plan and Whatcom County was lucky enough to be on it, they want it to be multi-use with motorized vehicles, which I would support. They aren't going to put that in the watershed. So again, DNR is not, not your alternative savior for for the watershed as far as recreation goes. They, they came here with no plan and no money. Um, I, I do understand some of the fears and the opposition. Yes, it, it, it might cost us some money. Yes, we are gonna lose some timber harvest, timber harvest. I understand the timber industry does not like that. I mean, that's their livelihood. That's, their, that's their, their, their culture, and it's a symbolic message that on some level says, we don't like forestry in our watersheds because it's bad for the environment. I, I hear their pain. I've talked to Tom Westergreen and Dick Whitmore, and I know there's a lot of emotion there. And just for the record, I did not call Dick Whitmore an anarchist. I'm not sure how he got there, for, but anyway. <laughs> we, we've heard other ac accusations or some hyperbole along the lines of, you know, uh, if, if the council does this land transfer from state management to county management, your land could be seized next. That was actually a communication that was sent to me. Like, this, this is not us seizing land. This is not us seizing private property. This is county land. This is the people's land of Whatcom County being managed by the state, and we're asking for it back. I, I am convinced that this will be a net positive for recreation, for economic development, and jobs, and water quality. It will not solve our water quality problems in Lake Whatcom. Development is definitely a much bigger problem. But it is still better. Logging roads, mass wasting events are serious issues. So, my most important reason, though, for, for supporting this is that I want Whatcom County to control our own destiny. And if you want to control your own destiny, you, sometimes you have to write your own checks. And I do not ever want to be in the position again where we have to sue one state agency to protect our drinking water at the same time another state agency is sanctioning us for not doing enough to protect our drinking water. That is the situation we find ourselves in here. So the land belongs to the people of Whatcom County, and I think we are up to the challenge of managing it for our benefit. Um, you know, this is the only time I'm going to speak tonight, so if you don't mind, I've got a couple, Go a couple more things, and then I won't respond to the rebuttals that I'm sure will come, and that's totally fine. Um, more on a general note, you know, I, I, I tend to be pretty blunt. I offend people fairly often, and I'm sure I've offended everybody in here once or twice, and that's okay. Um, what's great, though, is when, even when I say something people don't like or they don't like my vote, I have never felt personal animosity or hostility. No one has ever called my house in the middle of the night to curse me out. No one's ever slammed a door in my face. And the only time I've ever been heckled was at my, one of my own fundraisers. <laughs> are we talking about the Rican Bay? Yes, we are, well, we're talking about, we're talking about Whatcom County. And, and what I think is so great about Whatcom County is I, I think there's an awesome sense of community here and that we're in this together. And that Whatcom County really comes first. I think we take a lot of pride in that. And I, I worry, and, I, and I'm, I'm being very serious, I do worry, as I, I've seen how the emotions have really gotten stronger on this, that we have some other very big issues coming down the line that are also 
potentially very divisive, and I worry about outside money coming in and magnifying those divisions. And you know, I'm just I I I really hope we can keep in mind that the spirit of Whatcom County is that yeah we can we can disagree and we can be dysfunctional, but we do it together. And <laughs> and I I really I'm really I know it's funny, but it, I'm being very genuine about this because we see what happens at the national level with their level of rancor and dysfunction, and I hope um, we can really avoid that and and. Um, you know, after tonight and going forward. So Sharon Westergreen mentioned a little voice waking, waking us up at 2 in the morning. And yes, she's right. I hear a little voice every morning <laughs> at midnight and at 2 a.m. and roughly around 5 o'clock. And her name's Phoebe. <laughs> and I feed her milk. And I love her very much. And that's the little voice that I'm listening to. And, and so for Phoebe and my son Atticus and the other kids in Whatcom County, I am going to support the reconveyance. Thank you, Councilmember Mann, Councilmember Kremen, and then Brenner. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, out of respect for the uh, most senior member on the council, I'm I'm going to. Uh, that was a compliment. I'm going to ask. Well, I meant in. In knowledge and expertise, I don't know about the wisdom part, but 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 uh, I, I'm going to defer. I'm going to defer to you and, and let you have an opportunity to. to I'm, you've been very patient, and because of that, I think you should be rewarded by being able to speak your piece right now. Well, I'm going to start off by saying, after tonight, I'm still going to feel the same way about all of you, whatever that is. So, okay, um, I don't support the reconveyance, and the, the biggest reason was um, somebody from the Department of Ecology, the local office, caught me walking out to my car one day, a while, quite a while back, and said, oh, please, is there anything I can do to get you to support this reconveyance? And I said, well... You and I don't always agree, but I trust you completely. If you can tell me that the reconveyance will afford any significant improvement at all in water quality in the lake, because that's my issue, then I will support it. And he said, I can't tell you that. He said, I just think it's going to be the greatest thing for the county, and it will bring recreation in, and that's so great. But he, you know, I've been looking for, for something that would tell me that. The problem, for me, the biggest problem in Lake Whatcom is pollution, and it is caused by development. And not only is the Department of Ecology going to make us spend millions trying to fix that, we're also, there are so many things that the county needs to be doing to encourage people and incentivize people to retrofit. That's, those are the big costs and the big bang for the buck. So that's my main reason, but I did want to talk about some other things. People, you know, the scare thing of landslides, mass wasting. If, we, if another tree was never cut in the Lake Whatcom watershed, you would still have landslides and mass wastings. The last one caused by, that they were sure it was caused by logging at all, was many years ago. And it hasn't happened since not only did the state laws change, but Whatcom County, which hasn't been mentioned hardly at all what we did, and I voted for it, we passed the Lake Whatcom Landscape Plan. It went down to the state. The, the concerns the state had, um, I disagree with what some people said, they didn't want to do it. They wanted to make sure they were going to be reimbursed because it was money coming out of their pocket. And that was, you know, mediated and it, and it happened. We had, we not only had the best plan for this state, We've been told we had the best landscape plan of any, anywhere in the country. We have complete local control with our landscape plan. We've always had it, ever since we did that. If, if anybody, parks people, anybody, thinks the state isn't doing something right or jeopardizing anything, we step in. We can do that. We have that right. And that, you know, has been so little has been talked about that. Um, so I want you to know that we're not off the hook for for landslides and mass wastings. They will happen, and they are very expensive. 
and it'll be our liability and our cost to clean them up. Uh, the thing about the North Fork, I was very upset with DNR when people came to us about the North Fork and said how awful it was that they shut down that North Fork trail system. And I was real upset. I did learn something when the DNR talked to us, that they had been in negotiations with the mountain bikers since 2007 to stop building illegal trails in that area. <clears throat> and they worked with them for five, six years before they closed <clears throat> before they closed it down because it kept happening. And then one of the main people who told me all this stuff, a you know, mountain biker, said at the meeting, yeah, well, there, we did do stuff illegal, and yeah, but, well, we can't do stuff like that. If we allow illegal trails to go in there for any good reason, we are so liable. If, anybody, if anything happens to anybody on those trails, it's all us now. And it's happened to the state, and I don't want it to happen to us. And I, thought, I, said, I asked, I said, Aren't we absolved of liability if we say that this is a public park? Because there's, you know, laws about that. And what they said was, all bets are off when you end up before a jury. And that's a lot of cost, even if we ended up winning. But it's a lot of cost, even more so if we don't. There's so much liability, money that I would rather see us spending on fixing big bang problems in the Lake Whatcom watershed if, because again, I'm talking about water quality. My husband is a mountain biker, by the way, um, and I'm scared we're going to end up losing our access to Galbraith, which has been maintained and has, a good job has been done on that. I'm scared we're going to end up losing that. I have asked Mr. McFarland at least three times at meetings, um, what do you, give me an approximate, what kind of trails are they're going to be for mountain bikers and oh well that'll come with the planning i said well can't you just tell me what you think nope that'll come with the planning um and i heard what he said about it's the same planning process for all parks but of every other park which none of them is anywhere near this size we have been given way more specific information up front so that's that's really important to me that I know that the mountain bikers have been loyal supporting this, and I think that they're going to end up losing. So I, I hope I'm wrong, but that's what I think is going to happen. Um, the whole reason, a main reason for this reconveyance has to do with steep slopes in the watershed. Our landscape plan says you cannot log on crit in critical areas um, near steep slope, unstable sl steep slopes. We've, we've got that protection right now, and I'm just not sure people understood that if, I don't know. Last but not least, we do have an economic problem in Whatcom County. We've been making more park land, buying up more areas and making more park land, and we have an increasing economic problem in Whatcom County. We have had more money go out of this county, county government, than come in for so many years now, I can't even remember when, when it was flush, but it's still happening. It happened with our last budget. And we pa the majority, I didn't vote for it, the majority passed the budget, and months later we're told, okay, now you've got to go cut uh, a whole, bu you know, a certain percentage more. When people already pulled their belts in on what they could cut and how to get up. And so we don't have money. It's not going to come from the county. And... You know, I like some of the ideas about getting users to pay and, and help us do this. But I can guarantee you on trails and stuff, even if you get free people to help do it, there's all these processes you've got to go through with the feds and the state to get through that costs us a fortune and ends up taking a lot of time. And for those reasons, the main reason is the water quality one. I, I'm, I'm very concerned we are not going to have money available, money we need to do the big bang uh, problems in the watershed that everybody agrees on. Everybody. So I hope I'm wrong. <laughs>